Sorry, this episode fucked me up. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Interesting. I'm looking forward to getting into that. <laughs> I... yeah, Farscape, me too, does, Farscape does the thing. Because I don't, I don't, I thought it was mostly fun and I don't it was, know. It, it was fun until it was, it was nightmare. Reading <laughs> <laughs> parts, very. Well, it, but, yes, that's Farscape. Yeah. <laughs> it's also, I don't know, it was a mixed bag for me. I don't know. I, uh, yeah, it, it started weak and and then as it sucked me into an absolutely horrifying concept, got much stronger. <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm. I the 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 discussions where we're contrasting, I think, are the best discussions. So, agreed. Mm-hmm. Good. All right. Uh, well, I'm glad everybody liked it. So, or got, <laughs> uh, has feelings about it. Mm. We're back to the bottle episodes. Well, that's the thing. Like I, I have some feelings on it, but also it's one of those those ones where I'm like, I don't feel like I have a ton to say about it. I don't know, which is interesting because it well, seems seems like Josh has gotten gone a lot. <laughs> we'll see. Like my summary is one of the shortest summaries I think I've done. Okay, okay, okay. And yet, I yeah, yeah, I don't know if I have a lot to say, but I definitely have things to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's. Shall we start then? Yeah. yeah let's do it. Hi, friends. Hello, Poppets. Howdy, y'all. And welcome to Muppet Sex and Trauma. I'm Sarah Azat, the fat culture critic on YouTube. I'm Jack Cram, editor slash right-hand man for Passion of the Nerd and ed- editor for Chipperish Media. And I'm Josh Gonston, and I'm totally not a parasitic replacement of Josh Gonston. <laughs> that might be my favorite one. I, I think we might need you to prove it. Can you fart on command? <laughs> well, I can. I can, but it won't be the same proof that Rigel could offer. Do you fought helium? Please tell me you, you fought helium. No, and I don't feel like my, my fiance would appreciate that proof either. <laughs> I... <laughs> Never mind. Nope. Shut up, Jack. <laughs> yeah, babe, babe, babe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, I stopped myself for once. We are off to a start. <laughs> we are off to a start indeed. Okay. Beware of Dog was written by Nareen Shankar, who is one of the co-executive producers on this season. They've also written before for The Way We Weren't, where, like this episode, they collaborated with director Tony Tilsey. John isn't doing so good. He's talking to himself and building chessboards to play against empty air. Aaron is starting to worry, but they have other things to worry about first. Their most recent supplies of shipments may be contaminated with people cocooning parasites. Luckily, Gianna and Dargo have managed to get a hold of a parasite-hunting creature, though they're a little fuzzy on the details. Translator microbe problems. Presenting the Vork, a little alien critter with big ears who sniffs things and pees a lot. While the Vork is zipping around the ship, John encounters a strange, menacing creature hiding in the fence. And so begins the first creature hunt. The crew spreads all over the ship, but when Chiana and Rigel meet in the cargo bay, the creature attacks. Dargo arrives to defend them and is savaged. Aaron and John come to find Rigel trying to rouse him. In the med bay, Zahn discovers that Dargo has been poisoned. He's in bad shape and she needs the creature captured alive to sample its venom. Aaron and John start a new creature hunt, this time using the Vork as a guide. That is until they see the Vork transform. Oh no, is the Vork the creature? And we're going on a Vork hunt. But when they bring it to Zahn, she finds no trace of venom. And besides, it bit Eren before with no problems. So maybe the Vork is the creature, but not the parasite? Maybe there is a secret third thing? If only the Vork could tell us. Well, John says, why can't it? One translator microbe injection later, and Pilot is able to somewhat understand what the Vork is saying. It wants to help. It, it wants to kill the parasite. So let's try this again. We're going on a parasite hunt with the Vork. Until it hauls off and attacks Rigel. And now Rigel is full of parasite venom. So the Vork was the creature and the parasite all along? And it's time for another Vork hunt. But this time the Vork lets them find it. It must be leading them into a trap. 
But no, they easily find it and shoot it. So not a trap? It was actually leading them to the location of a cocoon. A cocoon that splits open to reveal Rigel, the real Rigel, who was attacked while checking on the supplies in the opening. So the Vork is the creature, but not the parasite. Rigel is the parasite. Well, more than he usually is. In the medbay, faux Rigel goes a little oogie boogie man with bugs coming out of his face before moving to attack Zahn. Luckily, the cavalry arrives in the form of John and Aaron. Faux Rigel is dispatched and everyone recovers, except the Vork, who dies in Aaron's arms, happy at having done his job. Sometime later, Aaron confronts John about some of his particularly unhinged behavior and he confesses that he's been seeing and hearing Scorpius. It's not a memory, he says. It's something else. She offers help, but he dismisses her. And as she leaves, we see Scorpius through his eyes. So it's a Volk. I was calling it Bork. It's, it's Bork in my notes, but it's Volk. Okay. Yes, Volk with the V. Okay. Yeah, I was like, Bork? I kind of wish it was called Bork. I like Bork. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did they mean for it to look like that one alien from that one show? It looked familiar to me, but I, I yeah, don't know. I don't think from. it was deliberate, but yeah, the, it does have that. It's definitely familiar to, to, to yeah. I, and I don't remember the alien or the show, but there's an alien on a show that the, like pops up. Uh, skitters off yeah like i'm not crazy i'm not a parasite or anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they they were a little bit unsure about the design of the some of this creature uh especially the um the other manifestation of it uh which um apparently ben browder thought looked like a tandoori chicken which is why there's that line <laughs> <laughs> The the other version of it reminded me of um uh the creature from a movie called Species. Um oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Um I I was immediately suspicious when I see this cute, adorable crank creature. I'm like, that <laughs> that creature, that's gonna fuck shit up. I guarantee it. And I was wrong, but kind of. And uh yeah, but I was immediately sus. Immediately. <laughs> So this episode fucked me up because I was I was also immediately suspicious of the creature. Then I was mm-hmm. like, no, no, wait, it's Farscape. If that's my first reaction, then the creature's actually probably fine. Okay. But then when the creature turned into what eventually turned into out to be a red herring, but it looked like it was like actually causing the problem. I was like, oh, wait, so I was right to be suspicious. But then it was a red herring. Yeah. <laughs> and then fucking Rigel's faux Rigel's face. Like, <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is uh, uh, that is disturbing. Man. I am glad that it's only that it's an early 2000s level effects because I think I that is not a shot I want to be actually realistic. Right. No, no. So this okay. episode had me fucked up. <laughs> yep, yep. It, 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 was... it is a very Farscape episode, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. very. There's a I, twist, and there's a twist on the twist. And I would have put money on it being a Tony Tilsey episode before I checked mm. the credits. Mm. Like, okay. absolutely. Like, the directing, this this is totally the Tilsey stuff we've been getting used to. Like, the the um, the use of space and, yeah. like, let's play around in the corridors. And, like, just they're just having so much fun with that. Mm-hmm. It's just like there isn't much plot to this episode, no. but there is so much atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was it, it, like, yeah. Started off like I was saying before we started um, talking. I, the episode felt a little weak to me to begin with because it was like, all right, we got we got another creature on on Moya to to hunt or to mess with or whatever again. Okay, I guess we've done this before. But then when it kept twisting and turning as the episode was going, and and R- fucking Rigel exploded out of the cocoon, and then the, co- <laughs> then the you know Rigel Burton, Bo Rigel, <laughs> <laughs> not like bugs either. Yeah, um, this is this is also one that's really good on rewatch. Yeah, yeah, because. Uh, we don't see the real Rigel after the teaser until right. he bursts out of the cocoon. Yeah. Yeah. 
This episode was almost exactly what I needed after the trilogy that we we just watched that was so dramatic and like almost exhausting to watch. But this was just fun and silly yeah. for the most part. And I really enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah sure. We went from big Shakespearean drama to mm-hmm. submarine critter hunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very <laughs> self-contained and yeah. Good way of describing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We we know Farscape does bottle episodes well. Um, because mm. they just like let's play, and yeah, uh, it also rewards well on rewatch when you have seen the rest of the season. Um, oh, okay, good so. enough. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so I guess Scorpius is taunting John telepathically or something, yeah. I <sighs> So we're getting into the trauma of Muppet sex and trauma. Um, well, that too. Yes. And 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 I appreciate that, but um, like the first sort of flashback that he has, he gets the flashback to, to the chair and everything. I'm like, all right, cool. We're doing PTSD. But then throughout the episode, um, particularly the way um, his, his hallucinations were placed, they were placed during the action and everything. I kept thinking, is this tied to what's going on? Has he he been poisoned? Has he been um, affected by what is going on? And um, it it was only when we got to the end of the episode that I was like, oh, no, this is PTSD or trauma. Um, And so it didn't quite... And and maybe that would that was that was just me. Maybe it's the the sci-fi keeping me on my toes because all fucky kinds of things can 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 happen. Um, and I didn't just go, oh, this this is a person experiencing experiencing PTSD. Um, so I feel like it. It's not that it didn't land for me. It just wasn't as clear for me throughout most of the episode. What so, what was going on? It's okay so, for it not to be clear. Answers will be revealed. Okay. In time. So mm-hmm. to me, it it looked less like PTSD and more like straight telepathy because we we've, we've seen. Mm-hmm. Way back, I'm pretty sure in the in the first season finale, um, Scorpius has like some limited mind reading abilities. And like a few episodes ago, um, when John pulled his his Dave Bowman impression and jumped from the the ship to the transport pod, there was that brief moment where Scorpius's voice comes over and is like, you know, "Don't die, John," or whatever he said. Uh, so yeah, it seems less like PTSD and more like Scorpius is taunting John from mm. a distance. Yeah, like, I'm I'm not sure. Like he's closer than than they know, I guess. Mm. But but I liked I, I I did like the reveal that he was playing playing chess with Scor- Scorpius the whole time. That was that cool. Was, that was cool. I liked that a lot. Um, but but yeah, I just <laughs> found it sort of confusing. Um, but yeah, sorry, as you said, mm-hmm. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to know exactly what's going on. And foreshadowing again, I'm going to foreshadow. I'm, I'm not necessarily saying it was bad. It, it, it was just con- confusing for me because I wasn't sure what they were doing. Um, yeah. It is okay for you to be confused for now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I, 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 I loved on the Scorpius bits though. I thought that was really fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. We got a lot of John and Aaron in this episode. Mm-hmm. And I, I, it's, just, it's really enjoyable, I think, watching them work together and bounce off of each other. Did you guys have mm-hmm. any thoughts on on that thread? Well, not necessarily on, on, on that thread, but I was expecting to see them as a couple this episode, and we didn't get that. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. We- we kind of did. There, there were um, at the very end when uh, Aaron was holding the the dying Bork in her arms. That was a was, great scene. It was a great scene. Like, <laughs> hey, to, to cry over a puppet. Like, good job, yeah. Claudia Black. <laughs> oh my God, yes. <laughs> but uh, B, just the way that John was holding her and comforting her, that was very boyfriendy to me. Um, mm, like the little kiss yeah. on her shoulder. Like, I feel like we actually did get to see them as a couple this episode, just not as like a overtly affectionate couple just a very okay. like just i don't know uh, understated is the word for it okay so i didn't get that vibe but yeah 
Okay. They were doing a couple, couple of things all episode to me. It is a slow mm-hmm. burn. Hmm. <laughs> they're, they're building something. I loved um, when they're checking out, when John shoots the uh, grate and they're checking out uh, what happened and Aaron's like, have you considered the possibility that they just shot right, Rigel? <laughs> that really made, made me, me laugh. I like that. Well, there's some foreshadowing for you too. <laughs> yeah right yeah that's one of the watch watching a second time you realize how often they refer to rigel like when they're talking about the parasites uh aaron and aaron says uh where chana says our parasite problem is solved and aaron says have we gotten rid of rigel <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> and there's yeah, there's a, lot there's of a few moments like that that just like really is really well done to to be just like it, they're just saying it, <laughs> but it doesn't make any sense unless, yeah. <laughs> until you watch the second time and go, ah, uh, and, and yet it does make sense because, of course, they're just it's they're just ripping on Rigel. Mm. Um, yeah, I just I think it's I, I just think it's a great this episode is a great piece of writing. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's repetitive, but it doesn't feel repetitive. In, in in terms of the writing, from for me, I felt like um, the episode was a little unfocused and all over the place. Um, not to the point where it sort of like ruined the experience for me, but it just kept chain changing directions ab- 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 abruptly, and even like tones kept shifting very very abruptly. And um, like like at first it felt very like whim- whimsical and fun and then it got really serious and then like the Vork is there and then to help them and then it's not and then it is and then and then it's not. Um I felt like it could have it could have been a little more focused, I guess, is is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I could see that. Um I think that, that for me, I just interpreted that as the the constant twistiness. So I, it didn't bother me as much. Um, the kind of the winding nature of this plot. I guess it just kind of felt a bit unnecessary because it, it twists so many times um, without, I don't think all of the twists necessarily added to it. Um, uh, yeah. That's fair. Yeah, that's See, fair. I like it because I think like it's not the, the twisty twisty isn't serving the plot, but it's serving like there's this whole atmosphere that this mm-hmm. episode like, that that feels to me like the real purpose of this episode is like to make you feel weird and twisted and off your guard like to mm. just have this kind of feeling of just what the fuck and the score <laughs> really did that like this this really like whimsical like fun house score throughout the episode that really mm. had a a really fun sort of off kilter feel to it yeah, funhouse is a good word for it because that, that encapsulates the creepiness of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it definitely started off a little too uh, cartoony for me. The the, mm. the score, but you're yeah. right; it it turned into like haunted circus <laughs> real mm. quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, the composer was pulling from Gremlins as an inspiration for the score. Oh, mm. that that. Wow, oh, yes, yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And it's the wow. same, it's the same kind of vibe. It's it like is. Yeah. we're in a fucked up place. Hmm. And it's, everything's gonna be off yeah. kilter and weird. And and yeah. that, and like that, like I I I feel like if you're going to overdo twists in a plot, and they do they overdo the twists, but they overdo yeah. it to serve the purpose. Mm-hmm. Sort of the theme of the story so it's yeah. one of those you can break any rule if it serves the story and the right. story here is because i think this is really about john's mind cracking up mm-hmm. and which fits very the, well the plot, yeah the yeah. plot is there to like get us in his headspace because mm-hmm. i think it's all about driving to that last scene that's what it feels like to me that's great i like that that's so, a really cool perspective. Like, I like that a lot. We're we're twisting through the ship in all sorts of different perspectives, and it's all mm. fucked up. And the the plot is twisting and twisting and twisting, and you don't know who's what, who's where. Mm-hmm. Mm. To I think that's to get us in the feel of John is fucked up. That's awesome. 
Josh? <laughs> Sarah is saying things that are causing my neurons to, to fire. Because, <laughs> okay, like okay, okay. So the point of this story is who we, somebody that we think is somebody isn't that person. Okay. Yep. It's not. It's not quite. It's not full on body snatchers. Like it's sort of like if body. It's snatchers, close though. It, it's close. Yeah. 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 It's it's if body snatchers stopped in Act One because mm. they, they they interrupted the parasites up, uh, cha- uh, attempt to take Dargo, mm-hmm. and then the episode would turn into where's Rigel? Where's Rigel? Rigel would have been missing, but it wasn't. Yeah. That. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. The the faux Rigel successfully fooled everybody up to and including Pilot. You know. Mm-hmm. Like he was talking, he the the fake Rigel was the one talking to pilot saying like, "I want to transport pod field and ready to go." Yeah, he's just like, "Fuck this, I'm out." <laughs> yeah. Um. So mm-hmm. if it's if it's Rigel, the Rigel that we spent most of the episode with isn't the real Rigel, and it's about John's mind cracking up. What if that isn't Scorpius? Okay. What if it's something else or somebody else? Like Moldus? <laughs> well, uh, that would make me happy. <laughs> of course. Of course. That would make me very happy. But like Yeah. Um Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then is it is it like a, a manifestation of his PTSD, like you're saying? Is well, it something that's else? That's the thing, yeah. Because my initial thought at what well, one went on initial thought, my my thought at the end of the episode was it was Farscape doing a Farscapian sci-fi twist on PTSD. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so this I don't whole know. season is that. Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> true, <laughs> true, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but this episode is bonkers, and I love that it goes from zero to a hundred and stays at a hundred the whole freaking time. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm liking more. this, Josh. <laughs> we'll do some more mulling on this. What if it is, because if, if it's not Scorpius, then who then who what was it? Yeah, so. that's the thing. And 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 it's definitely doing a play on PTSD, but because this is sci- yeah. sci-fi, it can play around with it in ways that it don't like it doesn't have to stick to the laws of our our reality, you know. It can do whatever it wants, essentially. So linking the Scorpius to the parasite. Because if Rigel wasn't Rigel and Rigel was the parasite, and Scorpius might not be Scorpius, Scorpius is the parasite. I love what this. Is happening because the whole point was it took over, like it captured Rigel, and it um, he was like, you know, it 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 fed on my memories and and it fed on mm. my emotions and all that shit, like. And so this this Scorpius apparition is driving John crazy, huh? What? So, ladies and gentlemen, and and uh, and folks on the uh, on the wider parts of the spectrum, uh, we will be reacting to the next episode. We will be recording a live reaction. So, if you want to see that, please <laughs> come and give us money at Patreon. Patreon.com, and, and you will see people react to certain things in the next episode oh, also rigel's line in in the cocoon I, imagine me food for something else <laughs> <laughs> i love that that's so that was good. good and the yeah, way that made he, me think he, of that <laughs> he proved himself by farting helium like, <laughs> <laughs> and what really seals that was right at the end when when he's like where are you going <laughs> 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 that well, chef's kiss loved it and they 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 leave him <laughs> <laughs> they leave him still half cocooned. Hmm. Josh, you're not gonna get. You're not gonna actually guess it. Just no, I'm sure I'm not gonna actually <laughs> guess what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's not. Pro- it's probably not Maldus. Is it Maldus? But I'm just. It's just the cogs are turning. Sarah, the wheels are are wheeling. Mm-hmm. The gerbils are running their ass off. <laughs> mm-hmm. And sticking with this episode as we must <laughs> um i'm gonna change gears a little bit and i want to talk about 
Chiana because I think there's some really interesting stuff with Chiana and Dargo going on. Yeah, I loved their uh, dy- dynamic this episode. Like we get more of them just loving each other, supporting each other, being there for for, for each other. And I I specifically love how um, Chiana refuses to just sit by and let him die. Like. Um, yeah, uh, John. John essentially tell, tells her to go and com- comfort Dar- Dargo, and she, she she's just like, no, like like the most tangible thing I can do right right now is to help, is to you know, do something. Um, yeah, I thought that was great. But then she does. She does spend the rest of the episode yeah. comforting him. And yeah, yeah. When he's when he's wrapped up in in Moya's blowhole or wherever that was. You know, and she's just out there cuddling with him. And then when he's when yeah. he's laying on the thing, and she's like literally a weighted blanket on top of him. Yeah. Hmm. I I, f- I find it interesting how um, at first she is quite frightened of sticking with him, and like I, I read some of that uh, of her chasing the thing as as and that scene where John tells her to go be with him, and she's so uncomfortable, and she's like, "What?" and watch him die. Mm. that yeah. was just yeah there's just so much so many layers in that like she does show up for him she does cuddle him and and but she's also terrified of just staying and, and cuddling him and not yeah. being able to do something or not mm. you know yeah she wants to be proactive yeah, yeah. i just i love Ed, Gigi edley's performance just has so many layers of just like i want to get the fuck out of here I want to fix things. I want to. Mm. I want to love my man. I want to do all the things. Mm. She's a. Um, it was, I was thinking about her brother, um, a little bit as also, um, especially when she was like you know, and watch him die, um, and thinking about how poorly she handled death earlier in the se- in the season. Mm-hmm. But you know, also like when, <laughs> good God, when. Fake Rigel exploded into a billion bugs, <laughs> and and they were ghostbustering the the shit out of it. And like she was just like, you know, her body was between Dargo and Danger the entire time. And I was just like, look at that, they really love each other. Look at that, it's adorable. <laughs> and it's it's interesting thinking about them as reflections. With uh, with Aaron is worried about her, not exactly her man, <laughs> but. <it's, laughs> <laughs> you know the man she loves obviously mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh and she's worried about john and trying to comfort him but it's not as easy for them right mm-hmm. you know we've, we've got that line where he says where she says if you need help and he says i'll ask like you do which just has so many layers <laughs> But I also like in that, just on that scene, I love that he doesn't keep his crisis from her. So many shows are like someone's in crisis and they don't tell anybody. You know, they have to be tough and brave and blah, blah, blah. You, you're you yeah. not going to watch me die, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, yeah, they it's... don't want someone to think that they're crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm. When we've seen plenty of evidence, you know, all throughout that if someone is not behaving normally like themselves, it's something to pay attention to. It's a problem. Mm. But yeah, no, it, it that was good. And I, I I also really liked how quickly Dargo um, dissuaded C- uh, Chiana from blaming herself for the whole thing. She was like, I brought mm. the thing on board. And he goes, where you brought it to board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He basically says it was my fault too. Mm-hmm. Like, that was nice. Hmm. And they found a way for Zon to be part of the episode while keeping her scenes minimal. Thank you. Right. <laughs> I, I didn't re- realize that, but yeah, and it's about freaking time. Like, well, yeah. I told I told you guys about the like the real world struggles that are they're trying to mm. keep her filming down. So they managed this time. This is one of the the things I appreciate in the mm. writing is they found a way to do that. And she was quite instrumental uh, mm-hmm. to, to everything going on. Yeah, that was good. She was kind of in a in a in a Giles position of mm. expositioning. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but yeah, and then uh, there was just a little bit damseled at the end, but I think, but I think like yeah. Dargo had already been, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you on that. Yeah, like almost like ev- everybody was in peril at one point or another. Yeah. Um, yeah. Her her um her telling Chiana to shut up hit me the wrong way. Okay. I, mm. I didn't I didn't appreciate that, both from a character and a writing perspective. Um just from a like you know, yes, Chiana was fluttering and buzzing about and in the way and all that kind of stuff, but only because she's scared to death that this person she loves is gonna die. Mm-hmm. And then from a writing perspective of I feel like Zahn would be more patient than that, or Zahn has been more patient than that previously. Mm-hmm. So that was a, that hit me wrong a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minor, minor pick of knitting. Yeah, it's I. I would expect Zahn to shut her down, but not, but with more gentleness than that. Or, yeah. or for mm-hmm. there to be to feel like there's a reason why she's being a bit short. Yeah. Zahn's character often seems all over the place for me. She seems to, um, I wouldn't go go as far as to say that, that she's different people at different different times, but there, there's there been lots of moments where, where I just feel like she wouldn't have said or done that. I don't know. Yeah, I do feel like the writers kind of um, are not on the same page about mm. Zahn. I, I, I think, think that's been very evident this season. Um, mm. and, and this is the same writer who wrote, uh, the way we weren't. And I, I think we see a similar, we, we saw more of edgies on in mm. that as well, when mm. she had, had so little patience for Aaron. Um, mm. so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, so do we have anything else about this episode? Do we have anything theme related? I mean, I think you said it. It's you know, it's all about sanity or the lack thereof and PTSD. Yeah, yeah, and I love the idea that this sort of show showcases what's going on in John John's head. I think that's quite a genius connection there. That was really yeah. well done, Sarah. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. keep. I'm gonna keep thinking. One thing I don't <laughs> want to think too deeply about is is Rachel's experience of this episode. No, I don't want to think she needs to go that either. <laughs> you want to know what's funny? I, I've i got it here here in my notes because my notes are often just a stream of consciousness. Like I don't I don't write, write my notes at the end. I, I write them as I'm watching. And I said, it was cool to see R- Rigel actually attack someone and, and sort of do, do the sacrifice play, but that wasn't Rigel. That, that wasn't was Rigel, the, the freaking yeah. parasite. So another like clue there that this isn't the real R- Rigel because Rigel, he's a bit of a coward. He wouldn't do that, you know? And we've, we, we've seen him bite people, we, but we haven't seen him do the like... Yeah, the full like a- attack, yeah. 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 I- but it's got you so off balance, you're not... You're not questioning, you're not thinking, exactly. and then you watch it the second time, and you're like, "Hey, <laughs> yeah, like, 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 there's lots of breadcrumbs throughout. Like yeah. that he's not, he's not isolating himself alone. He's wanting to be with company, hmm. and and Zon's like, "Oh, you want to be with us? You're scared." And he goes, yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared. There's a thing that's been specifically bred to hunt me on this ship. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the the scene at the end, we touched on it, but the scene where uh, the Vork dies, uh, Claudia Black, holy crap. Like, I was just <laughs> like, I shouldn't be feeling this right right now, but my God, was I fe- feeling it. Yeah, I got like quite emotional then and, and I'm like, wait, this is a puppet. This is like a one-off <laughs> puppet. Um, this this character was introduced this episode. <laughs> and it's so obviously a puppet. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, that um, is something. These these were not their best creatures. No. No. It, no. Jim Henson has done better. It looked yes. fake in this but very it also, show, but it, but it looked really cute though. Like I don't know, I liked it. I really liked it. Yeah, the Vork I could sort of go with. The other one, it does look a bit like weird. And and mm. actually, that's something they comment on. Remember um, when we talked about Jeremiah Crichton 
and I was I had listened to the audio commentary where they talk about like how badly everything went in that episode and the things yeah. they learned from that. Mm-hmm. And when, and they talk about this episode in that. And they talk about the problem with the creatures because they but they're particularly the what they call the tandoori chicken of the <laughs> Uh, this the 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 fighting creature and they were talking about how how the things they learned was how important it is to show it as little as possible yeah mm-hmm. which is right well, right. Yeah. right yeah is the the trick you can see them playing throughout this episode that tony tilsey mm-hmm. is like playing with the lights and the angles mm-hmm. and we see things from the creature's perspective and we see like all he's doing all pulling out all the stops to show as little of this creature as right. possible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, it was, it was, it was giving jaws at first, except then there wasn't a reveal. And so then I was like, Oh, they didn't like this costume either. <laughs> yeah. It's, there's, there's definitely, there's inspiration. I think pulled from jaws and the thing too, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The thing. I was getting the the thing vibes for sure. Yeah. yeah. But the the point is that at the end of that film, you see the whole shark. Mm. Yeah. Like like and, it's and, not seeing the shark for most of the film pays off. It builds up and pays off. Yeah. And it never happened with it with with the tandoori chicken. Yeah. I don't know that it pays off the jaws because that shark still looks so big. Well, oh, part of the reason why you didn't see it a lot is because the thing never worked. It was constantly breaking breaking down. So yeah. They uh, had to, yeah. And it's it's one of those filmmaking things, and it, like not even filmmaking goes back to theater days of y- you let the audience. There's things that you let the audience imagine as much as possible. Yeah, because, because the imagine is so much more powerful yeah. than yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, n- less is more, and nothing is scarier. I'm, I'm familiar. Mm. Yeah. But it, you can you can tell when that is in effect on purpose and when that is in effect because it's hiding a deficient special effect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you can absolutely tell that it was the second one in this episode. I I was even getting sucked in, though, when um, the scene where they learn learn to communicate with it and they're talking, talking to it through the uh, glass. I don't know. I was believing that, man. Even yeah. though it was literally a puppet just, like, jiggling around. I, I don't know. I was I was getting into it, man. Yeah, that that version of the Vork works, I think. I mean, mm-hmm. it it's... And the it's, transformation was cool as hell. Yes, yes. Uh, because I think it's just like it goes with the story to have it be this mm. utterly ridiculous thing. I mean, I think it could have looked more dog like and less, yeah, that's the thing. Human, yeah, but I think it's intended to be a dog. Thing. I don't, I don't I like, I was like, expecting something much more dog like, yeah, yeah, it acts very dog like. And maybe if they'd gone, if they'd had the, the um, oh, yeah, Kandori chicken I, be more dog like. Uh, isn't there a throwaway line in in the beginning where they say that it sniffs out a parasite or something? <laughs> yeah, so, and yeah. John refers to it as Lassie. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. And I think its communication style feels very dog like. And I and I, oh, yeah. I I don't get quite so sucked in with Aaron at the end of the death scene because um, it does feel very puppety then. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. is 100% her per performance though 100%. Yeah, she does she does she does manage to sell it but my brain also goes yeah but it's a puppet and i think it's it's <laughs> if it's sort of more a little like puppet man sorry <laughs> <laughs> yes i think because it's a little it feels a little like a little puppet man and not a little mm-hmm. puppet dog yeah, yeah. It, it it looks like a naked baby but yeah. it acted like a dog <laughs> The yeah. the baby. With, with yeah. the peeing and everything like yeah it was it was coded dog from the beginning yeah oh uh, yeah the more i think about the, the more i'm like yeah actually no dog suits i guess it's i mean just... maybe a little bit hairless cat uh. yeah <laughs> one of those hairless egyptian cats whatever yeah. they're called yeah um but it's it you know you never saw the puppet in its entirety because it was so small somebody was having to puppeteer it yeah <laughs> and and like claudia black again doing an amazing job at acting was very clearly just yeah. carrying the puppet with her mm. at one point while it was like perched on her shoulder yeah that was i think we can guess where that was inspired by 
Hmm? That she was, she was a lot. Okay. A lot of this episode was actually worked out apparently in improvisation and like ideas from the actors. Oh, okay. Like in rehearsal and then sort and then sort of put it into the thing. And um and so she was thinking of Yoda in the backpack. Oh, oh God. okay. Did you get that at all? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um and just quickly, the the way pilot suddenly is like, oh, I can communicate with it with its like expressions and gestures and body language that felt a little ex machina a little like oh this is very convenient all of a sudden you know well it was Um, the translator microbes yeah i don't know some something about it still felt a little silly and just like out of out of left field i guess yeah yeah it's a bit yeah i it's a bit yada yada (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, it works. Like, it works for the story, for it, especially that's the thing. all he all he could understand is like sort of vague. That's the thing. The kind it, of communication you get from a dog of friend, yeah. friend, it's defend. Not, it's not. It's not that it's necessarily bad. It's just that I feel like you know, right in his room, then we're like, shit. We need to quickly come up with a way to uh, to to allow this thing to com- communicate. And boom, there it is. They they just sort yeah. of like spat it out without. Uh, you know, think, thinking about it too, 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 too much, which is fine because it's not a very important part. It's not a very, um, you know. Yeah. And yeah. we live in a world with communi- with translator microbes. So mm. yeah, giving them a little bit. Uh, the, 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 yeah, the real yada yada was the translator microbes not functioning with the yeah. people they bought the Vork from. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they didn't fully understand what they were buying. <laughs> but I, I'm all for... I, I'm very much on board with uh, contrivance is necess- is often necessary to start a story. Right. It did feel a little con- con- contrived, yeah. It doesn't become a problem unless the contrivance... Like, you can contrive to get your characters into trouble. Mm-hmm. It's cheating when it contr- when contrivance gets them out of trouble. Right, okay. okay. And this... And the, the and so the translator microbes was a little bit of like let, let's get them out of this, let's let's move plot forward, which is sort of in the in between space between mm-hmm. getting them into trouble and getting them out of trouble. But I think it works because it's ultimately a mislead because they misunderstand, they understand the con the like they translate the concepts of what he's saying mm-hmm. or what he's thinking like friend defend why hurt me but they un but they misunderstand the meaning behind it which is always the kind of miscommunication that i think works right. in a story oh, because what yeah. he's actually saying is your friend is the parasite mm. not i am your friend <laughs> i That's... am defending you it's like no <laughs> your friend is the parasite yeah. and he was i and he was being defended <laughs> that's, they, that's why clever, i attacked yeah. dargo which I, yeah which is like I think, yeah, that that kind that works. Yeah, it's, it does it's actually. Like, yeah, now now you man, mentioned it. it yeah, it's that does. putting your hand on the scales a bit, but you know, you know it gets us. Yeah, no, I didn't think of that. No, <laughs> I I'm I mostly rescind that criticism. Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, no, that works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're we're aware that they're mm. that the hand of the writer is shifting things but yeah. you know, at least it gets us someplace interesting it does it does it does <laughs> and 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 it leads to some really good good stuff so yeah yeah hmm. what you thinking josh oh no i, I, I don't really have a <laughs> lot of thought on the translator microbes they just are there's a yeah. there's an episode of uh, star trek enterprise where uh an alien race tries to use a, a translator on the captain's dog and I always crack up at that scene, and this scene kind of reminded me of that scene because it's it's very much like, yeah, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you try to point the translator at anybody that you possibly could? Why, why don't they just go around and shoot translator microbes at everything? You know, I don't know because then uh, you'll just hear your cat going, "Feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me." <laughs> <laughs> Leave wonder, me alone. <laughs> I wonder if uh, if they inject how many translator microbes it would take first of all to inject into Moya. But if they could hear Moya talk again with translator microbes. Mm. I wonder. I mean, Pilot understands her, but they yeah. don't. But when Moya talked directly to Zahn, it was like, please, 
<laughs> I I dislike that a lot more <laughs> than than, than yeah. this. Well, that oh, that I, was a Deus Ex Machina. Machina. I, Literally, that yeah. was a god in the I, machine. <laughs> I loved the concept of of that, but the way they made her speak in like broken English was just okay. that was terrible. I didn't like that. <laughs> I just I would have loved to have hear Moya. Com- communicate clearly and and you know like 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 express herself in a more oh. concise way. It was very finding Nima for me. Yeah. yeah. It, oh, absolutely was. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's always been animal co- coded to me. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Kind of a can't think of where to place it, but it's kind of neat thing. Um, from from the backstage, apparently the bugs, mm-hmm. the the on skidding along the floor was partly done by raisins. <laughs> wow i i love weird random plot of prop stuff like okay yeah yeah i like that how how you make shit work and they're definitely it's very 2000s that you're that you're the the, the cgi but i love the sort of like mixing mm-hmm. of cg and practical that they're doing mm-hmm. which sometimes works and sometimes meh. but yeah um mm-hmm. Mixing of CG and practical, I always think of Rigel walking up an alien's birth canal. <laughs> it's better than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that I ain't a- touching that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what he wanted to say. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. So, um, any further thoughts on that last scene? That I the, the the opening and closing scenes, I think, are sort of the most. Not, not really. I just, I just thought it was really cool how how they connected them. How John was uh, playing chess with Scorp- Scorpius the whole time. Um, I, I want that chess set. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I was a little fast. I was a little um not annoyed, but like the fact that he's not then he, then he doesn't really tell Aaron exactly what's going on just like bugs me. I hate that kind of trope, uh the whole conflict created by a character not telling others something they should definitely tell them. Um yeah. Well, that's that's the thing I like about it is that he does tell her as best that he can. Well, kind of, yeah. It it he doesn't it, it sort of takes until she has to push, but I I like that he does tell her. Yeah, but he doesn't ne- necessarily say I'm sitting here with Scorp- Scorpius playing a game of chess, you know. You and know. he says um, and he says there's a trap coming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he says what he says is I hear him I love his description of it's as if the you know yeah, someone really speaks your name across a crowded room and then just mm-hmm. as clear as a bell. And he says Scorpius says he's going to get me. So I think, yeah, and mm. and it's interesting. Like you guys thought that he spared Scorpius last episode out of the goodness of yes, his yeah, goodness. I that. yeah, yeah. And uh, in here, he's but uh, any thoughts on the he tried? Yeah, something just compelled him. Yeah, the, yeah, there must be some sort of mind fucky thing going on with Scorp- Scorpius. Scorpius is like, and 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 I don't know, maybe something in the chair when when John was in the the, the chair, Scorpius was a, able to plant something in his brain or. or alter something maybe be there bonded somehow um maybe like scorpius like planted himself in john's head so he can constantly monitor john or, or i don't know you know we shall see <laughs> i like the poker face there well done <laughs> okay. yeah that's the only, only thing i can think of he must have done something to him in the chair that's what i think So, anybody, <laughs> what's your favorite part? My favorite part, 
My favorite part is when the Vork humps Aaron's leg. I thought that was so funny. It, <laughs> it it was one of the most ridiculous and absurd things I've seen in this show. Like this show doesn't give a fuck. This show is like, yep, yeah, let's have a character piss fire. Let's have, have this a alien humps as someone's leg. Let's just do it because it's stupid and it's fun. Let's do it. I love it. Uh, despite how much it creeped me out, my favorite part was actually when Phil Rigel burst into the tiny bugs and they were crawling across the floor. <laughs> <laughs> like that was just like. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite part is kind of a ongoing thing, but I just I love Aaron and John working together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just the way that they they have this. Like connection. They they just. Mm-hmm. like how they just understand each other so well like the scene where they kill the bugs mm-hmm. and just like throw the gun and the thing and then they, it's it's yeah. just so good it was very like aliens sort of like action he- hero badass kind of thing i love that yeah and but then they, say, they say the same thing afterwards and they both kind of look at each other like oh my god we've been spending too much time together <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that whole yeah. that whole thing of like this not it's it's no longer John McClane. It's mm. the T it's the McClanes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> McClane's that's great. Yeah. They are they, you know, they 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 action hero together and in sync. Apart mm-hmm. from this well, apart from yeah. when there's the off note. Yeah, like a lot of sci-fi is very like elegant and high highbrow and stuff, but I love this this kind of sci-fi where it's it's willing to just 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 do fun things. It's willing to do these sort of like yeah, it's not it's not dry in any sense sense of the word, which is why I struggle with some sci-fi. You know, um, stuff like that is great. Love it. Yeah. Um... Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's great. Hmm. So good. Next episode is called "Won't Get Fooled Again." We will be Won't reacting to again. that, hmm. and then the episode following that is the locket, where if things work out, we will have a guest. Sweet. Oh. Cool. 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 So. Uh, do you want to tell the folks where they can find you? You can find me on Twitter at lack of surprise one. That's all one word with a number one at the end. Uh, you can find me over on our Discord server, Howdy Poppets. Uh, I'm Jack Spraddington over there. And you can find me on Instagram at Jack Cram, all lo- lowercase one word. Josh, what about you, sir? You know, I spend a lot of time over on Instagram at Josh Gosden, all lowercase, all one word. Uh, food and self care is my jam. Nice. Sorry. You can find me on as the Fat Culture Critic on YouTube. Um, I just, when you get this, we'll have released um, a video I'm calling "One Scene for Resistance" as a pro- as a prompt to folks. Um, and mine I did on the Bread and Roses scene in the film pride from 2014 um that is going to be going out tomorrow from the day we're recording (laughs) um and uh and also some point in perhaps by this point you will i will have released my um video on my fair lady that i uh am currently editing yeah and you can also find me on twitter at uh, blue stock and sarah nice and you can join our our patron, and you can always join our Patreon or come meet us in our Discord. Yes, please do. So join us in two weeks, and uh, I highly recommend you join the Patreon so that you can see us react to mm-hmm. "Won't Get Fooled Again." Thanks, friends. Bye. Bye. Y'all. A lot of you probably know what's coming, but just for uh, the sake of it, uh, there are maybe some things that are disturbing in the the following episode. Oh. Uh, And if you need to 
do whatever to take care of yourself. Uh, do that. I like um, disturbing. I, I think he will probably enjoy it. Uh, I'm excited. But, yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like we're in for some Muppets, sex, and trauma. I love this man so much. I just, I adore you. Likewise, my friend.